Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'll be covering 3.4 histograms. 3.4 represents Chapter 3, Section 4 of the Pearson A-Level Maths Applied Maths Year 1 textbook. Let's go through the key facts of this section. Firstly, what are the key properties of a histogram? Number one, grouped continuous data can be represented in a histogram. Number two, the area of each bar in a histogram is proportional to the frequency. So mathematically, we can write A is proportional to F, which implies that A is equal KF. A represents the area, K represents the scale factor, F represents the frequency. Number three, if K is equal one, then the frequency density is given by frequency divided by class width. These are the key facts of 3.4 histograms. I'll be implementing these key facts within exam style questions. Here is exam style question one. The histogram in figure one shows the time taken to complete a crossword by a random sample of students. The number of students who completed the crossword in more than 15 minutes is 78. Estimate the percentage of students who took less than 11 minutes to complete the crossword. Now, what we have over here is single blue dots representing single small squares. Okay, right, now let's proceed with the solution. Firstly, we're going to look at this statement over here. The number of students who completed the crossword in more than 15 minutes is 78. So that frequency is 78. So let's start off with more than 15 minutes. Firstly, we know that the area is proportional to the frequency, so A is equal KF. Now we're going to calculate the area for more than 15 minutes. So A equal. We've got 15 here, so we want more than 15 minutes. We're calculating the area of one, two, three different bars. Let's start off with the first bar. So we've got area equal. The width is one, two, three boxes. So three multiplied by the height is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve boxes. So three times twelve plus. The next bar, the width is one, two, three, four boxes. So we've got four multiplied by the height, which is one, two, three boxes. Plus the area of the next bar. The width is two boxes. So we've got two multiplied by the height which is one, two boxes. So we can calculate the area. Three times 12 is 36, plus four times three is 12, plus two times two is four. So if I add this together, I get precisely 52. Okay, so we know that the A is 52. So 52 is equal K lots of the frequency. The frequency is 78, so we've got 78. K. Okay, so K is equal 52 divided by 78, which is 2 over 3. So our scale factor is K equal 2 over 3. So one student represents 2 over 3 small squares. Right, so I've got more than 15 minutes. Now I'm going to be looking at less than 11 minutes. So less than 11 minutes. How many students took less than 11 minutes to complete the crossword? Firstly, we start off with areas proportional to frequency. So this implies that A is equal KF. Now we're going to calculate the area for less than 11 minutes. So we've got 10 here. This represents 11. So we're going to calculate the area of this bar and this bar over here because we want less than 11 minutes. Okay, so we know that this is 11. Now the area of that first bar over here will be one, the width is one, times the height, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes. So one times eight plus. Now we're going to calculate the area of this bar. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The width is eight boxes multiplied by the height, which is one box. Okay, so if we add this together, we get precisely A equal 16. Okay, so now we know that the A is 16. So we've got 16 equal the scale factor K, which is two over three, lots of F. All right, so now I can actually calculate the F the number of students who took less than 11 minutes to complete the crossword. So that would be 16 
divide by 2 over 3. So f is equal 24. Right, 24 students took less than 11 minutes to complete their crossword. Now we want to work out the total number of students in order to find the percentage. Okay, so we want total students. We can start off with area is proportional to frequency, so A is equal KF. Right, so I want to calculate the area, the total area. So how many bars do I have now? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six different bars. Let's start off with the first bar. So we've got eight times one plus the second bar, that's two times eight plus the third bar, that's three times four plus the area of the fourth bar, that will be three times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Three times twelve plus the area of the next bar, which is one, two, three, four, four times three. Plus the area of the final bar, which is two times two. Okay, so if I add this all together, I get that the total area A is equal 88. Okay, so We've got A equal 88, so this implies that 88 is equal to the scale factor K, which is 2 over 3, lots of F. Okay, so now I can calculate the F. So the F is equal 88 divided by 2 over 3. And if I put this into my calculator, I get 132. Okay, so now I can calculate the percentage of students that took less than 11 minutes to complete the crossword. So less than 11 minutes represents 24 students. So we've got 24 divided by the total number of students, which is 132, multiplied by 100. So if I put this into my calculator, I get 18.2% to three significant figures. In statistics, we round to three significant figures. And that there, ladies and gents, completes exam study question one. Now with histograms, it is very important that you start by finding the K value. Once you've got your K value, you can work out any frequency. So please bear that in mind. Let's have a look at exam study question two. A variable Y was measured to the nearest whole number. 40 observations are given below. So we've got the class intervals for Y and we've got the frequency of each class interval. You can clearly see that the data has gaps. So we have to rewrite each class interval in its class boundary form. So the first class interval will be 10 take away 0 0.5, which is 9.5, 19 plus 0 0.5, which is 19.5. So over here, we've got 19.5 to 24.5, 24.5 to 28.5, 28.5 to 30.5. So now the data does not have gaps. Okay, right, so we've got the frequency of each class interval. A histogram was drawn and the bar representing the 10 to 19 class has a width of 2.5 centimeter and a height of 2.6 centimeter. Find the width and height of the bar representing the 20 to 24 class. Let's start off with this class interval, but we're going to use the class boundaries as required. So we've got 9.5 to 19.5. Firstly, we know that the area is proportional to frequency. So A is equal KF. That there, ladies and gents, is really important. So now we can calculate the area of the bar representing this class interval. So the area is given by 2.5 centimeter times 2.6 centimeter. So I can write 2.5 times 2.6. Okay, so the area is equal 6.5. Now that I know that the area is equal 6.5, I can put the 6.5 into this particular equation. So I've got 6.5 equal k lots of the frequency. Okay, what is the frequency? Well, the frequency of this class interval is 13. So I've got 13k. 
Hence, k is equal 6.5 divided by 13. 6.5 divided by 13 is 0 0.5. So that there is my k value, or you could say scale factor. Right, now we're going to calculate the class width. So the class width of this class interval is given by 19.5 take away 9.5, which is 10. So a class width of 10 represents a width, which is, so the width of the bar is 2.5 centimeter. Okay, so now we can work out what one class width is. To find one class width, we can divide both sides by 10. So 10 divided by 10, and then 2.5 divided by 10. Okay, so one class width will have a width of bar which is 0 0.25 centimeter. That information will be important later on. Now, find the width and height of the bar representing the 20 to 24 class. Okay, so let's move on to this class interval, but let's take the class boundaries. So now we've got 19.5 to 24.5. So we want to work out the width and height of the bar representing this class interval. Let's start off with the class width. So the class width is given by 24.5 take away 19.5. Ladies and gents, that is precisely 5. Now we know that one class width is equivalent to a width which is 0 0.25 centimetre. Right, so we've got class width of 5. How do we go from 1 to 5? Well, ladies and gents, we can multiply by 5 on both sides. Okay, so width of bar would be 0 0.25 multiplied by 5. Okay, so 0 0.25 multiplied by 5 is 1.25 centimetre. So therefore, the width of this class interval, the width of the bar, ladies and gents, is just 1.25 centimetre. Okay, right, so we've got width which is 1.25 centimetre. Let's calculate the area of the bar. So we know that area is proportional to frequency. So A is equal KF. This implies that the A is given by the K value, which is 0 0.5, multiplied by the frequency of this class interval. So the frequency is 7. So 0 0.5 times 7. Ladies and gents, we know that that there becomes 3.5. So the area of the bar is 3.5 centimetre squared. To work out the height of the bar, we can simply take the area, which is 3.5, and divide by the width, 1.25. Okay, so if I put this into my calculator, I get 2.8. Okay, so the height is 2.8 centimetre. Therefore, height of this class interval is 2.8 centimetre. That there, ladies and gents, is the solution. This completes exam style question two and this teaching video 3.4 histograms. If you found the teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.